Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to take a look at the Zhiyun Smooth 3 handheld gimbal for smartphones. If this is your first time to the channel, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and hit subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I want to say thank you to Pergear for supplying this for this review, but of course this review will as always be my own opinion after having used it for a while. The Smooth 3 came out pretty quickly after the release of the Smooth Q, so a lot of people were confused as to what's the difference and uh, I think most of it will come down to build quality, although there are a few small features that will differ from one to the other. The build quality on this is really, really solid. It's made from metal, although it's not heavy, feels very, very rugged and well built. The buttons on this may differ from the Smooth Q as well. We have a number of buttons on here, including a wheel and a button to change uh, settings on your smartphone right from the handle. You can start and stop recording right from the handle. You have a joystick as well as the button to change the modes. The start and stop record button is also the power button. Just hold it down for a few seconds to turn the power on or to turn the power off. Everything seems to work smoothly and as it should. My one complaint is that there is no uh, home position button or mode on the mode button that returns to home position easily. There's a little workaround for that which I will show you later in this video. The battery can be but doesn't need to be removed. You can charge it right in the handle uh, with the USB cable that is provided. There is also another USB connector up here to connect your phone and charge your phone while you're using it, but that cable is not provided. I will be making another video when I find out more about which cables work, which cables don't, and how to do that exactly. There's a quarter 20 screw on the bottom of here if you want to put it on a tripod for time-lapse mode or anything else, uh, but there are no other quarter 20 screws anywhere else on here. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's one knob to adjust the balance and there's one knob to adjust from horizontal to vertical shooting mode. Uh, we'll get more into that in just a second. The weight capacity has also been improved over the Smooth Q, so it should be able to hold pretty much any smartphone that's on the market currently. The improved weight capacity means you should also be able to attach additional uh, lenses or microphones and things like that up to a reasonable amount of weight. It comes in this nice case, which is kind of like a mini violin case. It's not completely hard, but it is uh, pretty rigid, so it will keep this safe. This is built really strongly anyway, so you don't have any problems with this and this combined it'll be safe and it's compact enough that it can fit into a lot of bags. The case does have a couple of little loops where you can attach a shoulder strap, which is included. Uh, I do wish, although with this size, that it had a little just small hand handle that you could carry in your hand easily instead of having to just grab the whole thing. With this small size, I don't need to carry it over my shoulder like I would with a bigger bag or a bigger case. Um, so in the future, I would appreciate if they added something like that. Although there's no dedicated space in this for a small cable like the charging cable, uh, there is enough space in between the gimbal and the case that you can slide it underneath or in there somewhere and still close the case just fine. So to attach your phone to it, it has this kind of spring-loaded clamp here. I do wish that this was a kind of screw to tighten design because this sort of takes two hands to do and you also have to hold your phone. If you have it on a little tripod like I do now, then you could do it a little bit more easily. Put your phone in one side here stretch the other and then slide it down to the base and it works just fine. But when you're holding this, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, not impossible, but you can kind of hold it using your, your stomach as a rest and use two hands and do more or less the same as when you're using it on a tripod. I found that's the easiest way. You have that kind of third point of contact there. Taking it out is also a little bit tricky, but basically using your stomach as a third point of contact will make it a little bit easier. It is easy to get your fingers pinched in here a little bit, so just be careful of that. Um, but using your stomach, using your body as a third point does make it a lot easier. Once it's in here, you want to balance it before you turn the power on to um, help the gimbal perform to its best and also to put less stress on the motors. So you have this little screw down here on this motor and you're just gonna slide it uh, back and forth to get your phone to balance. There are little markers on here um, that you can see if you want to remember the position, but uh, this does fit in the case, actually, even if you move this, so you don't have to adjust it unless you're changing phones. You can balance it once, put it in the case, and take it out and just put the phone back on. As long as you're not adjusting the position of the phone itself and you're keeping it all the way to the base here, and you're using the same phone with no additional attachments, you should be able to just take it off, take it on, and not have to rebalance it every time, which is nice. Once you have this balanced, you can go ahead and tighten this screw, and then you should be pretty much ready to go to turn this on if you want to shoot in horizontal mode. If you want to switch this over to vertical mode first, you're going to need to move this away from the base here because the phone needs to rotate. So just stretch that out a little bit. And then you can loosen this screw on the back here and you'll be able to twist this entire thing. 
and it kind of snaps into place at 90 degrees. So when you tighten it down, it should be right at 90 degrees. You'll have to balance it again, as you can see, but uh, you can shoot in this mode, holding the grip vertically, so you don't have to hold it sideways to get this. Um, I don't personally use this, but you can do that, and it is easy to do. You just have to balance it once more. So once you're all balanced and set to go, you're gonna go ahead and hold the power button down for a few seconds to turn it on, and it will go into this home position. When you first turn it on, it will always be in this pan follow mode where it will follow your pans, but it won't move in any other direction. If you press this mode button once, it will go into the complete lock mode, which won't follow any direction. And if you press it once again, it will go back into the pan follow mode. Pressing the button once will cycle between these two modes, and if you press it twice, it will go into a complete follow mode which will follow pan and tilt directions. From there, pressing it once will return you to the pan follow mode. And again, you can see it doesn't move in the tilt direction. In this mode, the uh, joystick here will not move sideways, but up and down, it will control the tilt of the phone. If you're in the second mode, which follows in no direction, then the joystick will control the pan as well as the tilt. If you're in the other position, which follows in every direction, the joystick will then, when you move it side to side, control the roll of the phone. So this is where one of my complaints comes in. It's that you have no easy and quick way to return to the home position. You can see that I'm quite off level here. I'm currently in the uh, total follow mode where it will follow my pan as well as my tilt. Um, and if I want to return to a pan follow mode, for example, I'll press the button once and now I'm in pan follow mode. But you can see my horizon is not level. So what I would want to do ideally is just to have a one click push to return to a level home position, but I don't. What I can do that I found out is if you hold down the mode button for a couple of seconds, it will kind of release all the motors and now you can move this freely. And then when you hold it down again, it will turn the motors back on and return it to that home position. And now we're in the pan follow mode and everything is leveled out again. So it takes a couple of seconds, but there is that kind of workaround to return to a level home position. Another interesting thing that I found out is that, uh, for example, the pan is obviously following this motor here when you're in a standard position, but if you start to tilt it forward, at a certain point, the pan will follow this motor here because of the way that I'm holding this. So you can see as I turn this, at some point it snaps in to switch motors, which is following. So you can get, if, depending on your angle, you can see that I got some kind of weird situation going on now. I haven't pushed the joystick or anything at all, but just because of the way that I tilted it and it followed the different motors and then tilted it back, it gets a little bit thrown off. So just be aware of that when you're going from holding it straight up to holding it kind of straight out. It will change which motor it's following in order to pan according to its current position. You can get some kind of quick jerks when it switches between those motors, or you can end up in a situation like this, depending on what you do. By the way, that does apply to all modes, not only the pan follow mode. When you're holding it vertically and you move more and more, I found it's about a 45 degree angle where it will switch over the motors. So that way it follows the same direction. If you're panning, it will always follow in this direction. So if you start to tilt forward, it will change which motor it's following in order to follow in this direction. So the same will go for uh, the tilt as well as any other movements that you make. So just be aware of that when you're moving it and holding it straight out like that. So that's what happens when you hold it kind of straight out, but what also will happen when you hold it to the side, it will flip over into this uh, vertical shooting mode, uh, which you can use if you wanna quickly shoot a vertical video, but you're holding this out to the side, so it's gonna be a bit more tiresome. If you wanna do this for a long period of time, again, you can switch this little uh, screw in the back to move the actual phone into a vertical position so you can take vertical videos while holding the gimbal vertically. I forgot to mention one very important feature. If you push this mode button three or even four or five times, it will go into the very important selfie mode. So as far as stabilization goes, it works very well. As long as you have your phone balanced before you turn the power on, it just works incredibly smoothly. Um, I have a video with some sample footage. If you wanna see that, you can click on screen now. Uh, I didn't do anything special to take measures against vibrations or movements for my walking, so this was not probably the smoothest video I could get. If I put more effort into it, you can definitely get more smooth video, the same as any handheld gimbal, but it will give you a little sample of what the gimbal itself is capable of doing. As I mentioned before, despite its rugged build, it is very lightweight, so it's no problem at all carrying it for long periods of time, and the battery life will definitely last you long enough. Uh, your phone battery will probably die way before the battery of the gimbal will die, 
But to prevent that, you can also charge your phone directly from the gimbal. There is a USB port over here that you can plug your phone into. There is some confusion about which cables will work and which won't. So I'm gonna test that out a little bit more and I will make a follow-up video to talk about that specifically. Be sure to check back if you wanna see that. I will post a link on the screen now and also in the description below to that video when it's ready. So as I mentioned, the button to start and stop recording as well as control some of the settings on your camera with this dial and button on the side. Um, it's very useful, but you have to use the Zune app to do that. You can connect by Bluetooth to the gimbal. The app itself is not perfect. It's definitely usable, but I wish they would make some improvements. I'm not gonna go too in depth to the app. In this video, I will make another video talking about the app specifically. So again, click on screen now or in the description below to check that out. Also with the Zune applications, you can adjust things like how fast it will follow your pan and tilt movements. Out of the box, I found it was a little bit oversensitive and moved very quickly. So I did tone that down a bit with the app and it seems to work just fine right now. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, this is just a really solid, well-performing gimbal. Aside from the app, there's very little to complain about. I do wish that the way of attaching the phone was a little bit less fumbly, and also that there was either a mode on the mode button or a dedicated button to return to the home position easily and quickly, but both of those things can be worked around and they're definitely not deal breakers. Again, I will be making a second video to go over the Zhiyun app and how it works together with this gimbal, so be sure to check the link in the description when that's ready. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave it down below and I will be sure to get back to you. Remember to like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to see more, and as always, thanks for watching.